Hello and welcome to this Manufacturing Systems Technology Part 2, Module 9. Uh, today, uh, we will just be focusing on this uh, failure mode effect analysis technique. Uh, uh, just a quick recap of what we were doing in the last uh, lecture. We were trying to identify on a systemic basis the various factors related to the noise uh, factors as well as you know the several external uh, factors as well as the signal factors which would be there for an engineering system. Uh, and uh, again, categorization of those factors as controllable and uncontrollable ones, so that finally the response of the system could get generated. In this sense, we also tried to understand on a transistor circuit what would really be the variability, uh, you know, factor which is available more towards the designer, and what is also the <laughs> controllable factors uh, which are, you know, mostly uh, related to the operators, etc. Today, we are going to in investigate uh, uh, this uh, whole technique, FMEA, which is a very important technique uh, for quality uh, control and you know, quality implementation, particularly at the process level. So, uh, most of the industries, particularly the automobile industries, etc., are very much into doing FMEA analysis at every level of the parts or components uh, and also the fitment as regards the assembly processes. So, what really is this FMEA? So, the term FMEA actually means failure mode effect analysis. Uh, it is an important technique that is widely uh, used in industry. Okay? And as I told you, big auto manufacturers and also uh, typically the goal is continuous product improvement uh, in terms of its quality uh, to satisfy some needs of the customer, etc., which are very, very uh, important for sustenance in a business. So, FMEA has in fact become the bread and butter of several engineers working at the process control level and uh, it can be described as a systematized group of activities intended to recognize and evaluate the potential failure of a product or a process and its resulting effect. Okay? So, you have to uh, list down the cause of the various uh, failures and then uh, you will have to again identify the most important cause. That is the whole purpose of uh, the FMEA analysis. And then you identify some actions that could eliminate or reduce the chances of the potential failure occurring. I am going to give you a detailed process example of a automotive paint shop that how FMEA can be carried out in a paint <coughs> painting process where you will understand what I am uh, telling more realistically or practically when we recognize and evaluate a problem and identify countermeasures to um, eliminate possibly the cause <coughs> of the problem. And then also FMEA uh, needs to document this whole process and the whole idea is that once a very organized uh, study of the failure modes uh, with its uh, ratings as well as the potential uh, you know uh, actions that could eliminate such failure modes uh, as well as its ratings are documented. Uh, the idea is that in future if such problems get arose arisen uh, due to a process decontrol uh, or a process going out of uh, you know the limits or whatever guidelines it has to follow, uh, you should be able to quickly get it back on track using referrals from the previous documentation that has been done by the industry. So, that is why documenting the process is very, very important in this particular case. Okay? So, it is complementary to the, to the design process of defining positively what is a design process, uh, what a design process must do to satisfy the customer. And uh, it is a generic approach that can be used to identify failure modes and analyze their effects on the system performance with the objective of developing a preventive strategy. Okay? So, that is what FMEA or failure mode effect analysis is about. So, the methodology uh, that is typically used uh, for the process FMEA is to again, you know, uh, the philosophy is really uh, the characterization of the various potential failures and its causes of a particular system. Okay? And uh, the failures can further be characterized by three important things. One is the occurrence, that means how often a particular failure mode occurs. If I am talking about a paint peel uh, off or maybe let us say uh, a dust spot in a painted automotive body. The idea again is that how often this uh, failure happens uh, 
you know and it, it goes undetected from the paint stage probably to the next stage of an automotive which is the assembly stage. So, uh, it, there may be a, a, a situation where in a shift of let us say about 300 vehicles uh, about 10 percent of the paint vehicles are about 30 vehicles are seen with uh, paint spot uh, paint these dust spots on the painted body. So, this is a failure and so the occurrence there is about 10 percent. So, in this same manner between processor at every level whether it is a component coming from the uh, vendors process to yours process or it is a, it's a uh, component produced in house which comes to your process at some stage. Uh, you have to uh, identify the failure modes which are creating disturbing influences on the overall quality and occurrence. Okay. Uh, then the question is the severity that how severe or how serious the failure is. For example, if it is a failure related to the life and death uh, of the driver of an automobile. For example, let us say the wheel nut uh, you know goes cross threaded and finally, it breaks uh, the particular nut which is used for mounting the wheel. This is now a very very serious problem concerned with the safety of the operator. So, obviously, the severity aspect of that failure is very important. So, first step is the occurrence, the frequency at which the failure has happened. The second step is the severity at which you are rating this failure to be happen, uh, happening and then finally, is the detection. So, uh, if there is a failure mode and it is detectable, then uh, obviously, uh, we should be able to recognize that to be relatively uh, not such a serious activity, but then if there is a failure mode where detection becomes a real issue or a real problem and it can uh, go undetected to all the way to the customer and that becomes a very, very critical issue. So, if I were to develop a mathematical rating system to identify all these different aspects associated with a failure like let us say the occurrence, the severity and the detection together and then we in analyze how severe. Uh, how frequent and how difficult to detect, then those are the kind of failure modes which you really should identify and never let it happen okay, on the whole uh, process process assembly. So, that is the whole governing philosophy of the FE, uh, FMEA process and um, we will like to now evaluate uh, such a different failure mode for a particularly a paint shop as I told you, where we will actually <coughs> try to rank it in order. So, first of all let us uh, study the methodology, the mathematical methodology of detecting the ranking order and then identifying the most ranked ones to the least ranked ones and then tackling those most ranked ones. So, that there can be a chance of elimination of all such failure modes which have uh, a, a high value of occurrence, quite severe and then uh, very low detection uh, possibilities okay. uh, or, or the difficulty level is very high of detection. So, <coughs> So, we will we will do that, but before prior to that let us actually study how the ranking uh, is done. So, principally the <laughs> implementation of the FMEA process uh, necessitates the following steps. Okay. First of all, you are identifying the problems for each operation and that can be identified uh, mostly at the local level. For example, when we are talking about a, a uh, automotive shop and we are talking about problems related to let us say the paint or the assembly of, of, of the particular component into the final vehicle. Then the group or the governing members who are associated with the fitment would be the best people and that is basically also the people who are online and who are doing the fitment okay, who would take a decision on that particular component or that particular failure mode. Okay. So, basically there are many ways of you know representing that thought process which comes out through a uh, committee discussion or a brainstorming and one of them can be for example, cause and effect diagrams which I will illustrate uh, a little bit later. It is also known as the Ishikawa uh, diagram or the herringbone diagrams. Uh, then uh, for example, the potential causes uh, of the machine failures uh, could involve mechanical or electrical subsystem failures, tools, inspections, equipments, operators and so forth and this has to be very clearly laid out as the exact problem or exact problems and what is the responsible reason for the particular problems. And uh, then you can use flow process charts as basis for understanding the problem which provides a common basis for communication among the committee members. Uh, also collect some data from time to time and uh, you know analyze if necessary if the data is already uh, available or if it is not available then you collect and analyze uh, whatever be the basis. So, all these uh, important things go towards really the identification of all the problems coming in a certain area on a given uh, period of time okay, 
and uh, you have to directly uh, relate the concerned local uh, manpower which is assisting in fitment of these parts or components or even a process. Okay. So, the process uh, level persons, personnel are really involved to do the brainstorming because they are the best people to actually comment on uh, the quality of the product at that particular level and the potential failure modes which may be ab able to go out of that particular uh, production level. Okay. So, now you prioritize the problem. So, you have studied all the problems uh, by means of this statistical analysis and I will actually uh, give you some basis. There are about seven odd different tools of quality control which uh, ha is nothing but a process uh, and then based on these processes you should be able to quickly and organized way uh, collect the data of problems related to a certain process or to a certain component. Okay. And so, that has to be documented in that particular order. So, I will discuss it towards the end of this FME activity. First of all, let us focus more on the FME as of now, but there are organized methods in which this process data will come out which will identify these are the problems, these are the uh, potential failure modes associated with the particular stage of the process or the uh, system that we are concerned with. Okay. So, then you prioritize the problems. Once you have identified the problems, you prioritize the problems and the priorities are based on rankings and these rankings are again done by those personnel who are involved in the process level itself. Okay. And so, the rankings basically would mean that you will have to uh, rank how frequently the problem happens, how severe the, the problem is and then how difficult or easy it is to detect the particular problem. And then you basically uh, rank each of these categories and multiply the ranks to each other to formulate something which is now known as the risk priority number. Okay. So, supposing if the defect, defect, defect is uh, high frequency defect it occurs more then obviously the rank should be more. Uh, similarly, if the severity of the problem is very high the rank should be more and vice versa. Let us say you have a scale of 0 to 10. So, if supposing we are uh, let us uh, we are just talking about let us say the the uh, engine mounting nut on the uh, the hood area of the particular engine. Okay. So, uh, here the nut needs to be of high quality obviously, the uh, nut is going to hold the tor torque of the bolt, the nut is uh, typically welded in the body and there is a reinforced bracket which is used to hold it and obviously, uh, there is an engine mounting cross member which comes uh, in the bottom of the engine to support the engine which actually gets held to those particular nuts in the body. And so, the idea is that uh, here if we cannot afford to have any cross threading. Okay. So, because if there is a cross threading there is a possibility that the bracket of the engine may come out from one of the sides and it may result in some kind of failures associated with that engine mounting step. So, uh, you will have to study that what is the severity level of this problem. This is probably one of the severe, uh, most severe problems uh, which would come out in comparison to something which is related to aesthetics of the vehicle for example. Although you know sometimes the strategy of the management is also involved to make or call on such a decision. Maybe uh, it is very important that these uh, issues related to let us say the painting of the body of an automotive. Uh, is given priority over functional uh, requirements sometimes. So, obviously, we will have to at least make a system where uh, the painting defects are also equally at some particular level. So, the idea is that more on a shop basis you identify your own problems and how you are contributing to the process and then prioritize based on the ranks or the risk priority number that you are given on that particular shop basis. So, for a paint shop for example, a paint dust may be of that critical importance uh, which is probably the same as the engine mounting members cross threading for the assembly shop. Okay. So, based on that individual area you can uh, mark you know uh, the rankings accordingly. Then obviously, you have the detectability of the system how, how difficult or how it is easy it is to detect. So, if it is a problem which is very hard to detect. Uh, then obviously, the rank of that particular problem would go up in a 0 to 10 scale and if it is easy to detect then the rank would be uh, slightly lower. So, this formulates the RPN or the risk priority numbers and now you organize on the basis of increase decreasing order of the RPNs and obviously, the first RPN which is the highest number would have uh, a very high occurrence, a very severe problem and very difficult to detect situation or vice versa. Okay. So, you uh, you know in order of RPN now analyze the problems and the goal is that you should start eliminating at least the first three or four pro 
problems to a totality and then study what is the you know level at which the problem gets uh, resolved or sorted out and and then uh, study the next three or next four so you should not uh, prioritize yourself towards all of them but study maybe the first three or the four rpns uh, or the potential failures and eliminate them and then go to the next ones okay and then there may be some where the occurrence may not be that high and the rank may be lower so obviously those would be in the lower category so you appro use appropriate tools to analyze the problems by making use of the uh, data that has been uh, you know characterized in the various formats uh, to uh, map this rpn or the risk priority number and then obviously you you implement some of the suggestions uh, given by the process engineers to reduce them and uh, that way you are able to actually see how the rpn is varying after the improvement okay so basically uh, when you have the identified failure modes and an rpn associated with it uh, you can always uh, do a countermeasure or a counteraction so that those modes get eliminated and then again rate the rpm after the countermeasures have been implemented on the system and see if the rpm is coming down okay so there is a tracking of how you are eliminating the highest occurring most severe difficult to detect defects okay on a very organized manner and the mapping is given by uh, the best person to give this mapping is the person who is associated with the process itself directly so you are having an rpn number and you are trying to reduce the rpn number by giving the countermeasure or identifying the countermeasure and then finally uh, the idea is that once all these rpns are reduced to the next level you can take the next three rpns and again try to reduce them to the next level so on so forth so that way you can actually uh, do a evaluation of the whole process uh, by doing this whole analysis and this analysis essentially is known as the failure mode effect analysis so i think i have made enough theoretical introduction so we'll close this module here in the interest of time the next module we are go actually going to do an fmea on a paint shop as i illustrated uh, for a particular defect which happens and uh, we will close on here by a take home message that uh, this theoretical introduction what has been uh, happened in the rpn would actually be implemented now and you will see how the tables are made or you know you have to very critically examine what is the format in which this whole fmea would be made which you are talking uh, or which you better know as the documentation related to the fmea thank you so much